Hey everyone, today we're talking about one of the most critical and least understood aspects of search engine optimization, how to put keywords into your website content for SEO. I talk to so many people, including those who claim to know how to do SEO. I think it's as simple as just getting a list of keywords they hope to rank for on search engines and then just putting them into their website somewhere. The truth is there's a lot more to it than that, but thankfully there are strategic, proven methods of inserting keywords into pages on your website to get them to rank. Stick around and I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step guide on how and where to insert keywords into your content for SEO, share common pitfalls to avoid, and give you actionable tips to help you level up your content game. So let's go. For this example, I'm gonna pick a blog on our website that's ranking for a keyword that we intended to rank it for, and then we'll reverse engineer it to show you how we inserted keywords into the content to get it to rank at the top of Google. The blog that I picked today uh, is this blog called How to Use Google Keyword Planner Without Creating an Ad. That's a term that we picked. We did keyword research. We found that it was potentially a winnable phrase, and I'll show you kind of our keyword subset that we picked in just a minute. But if you do go to Google, we've uh, put our results on here. We rank for about 57 keywords for this blog alone, two in the top three, and this one in green, this is the keyword we intended to win. So we are in the top three spots. We hit it right out of the gate. You're not gonna win every single one, but you wanna give yourself the best chance to win keywords in every single piece of content. Is every piece of content can be an asset on your website if you approach it correctly. This was our keyword subset that we picked. I'm gonna kind of split out my keywords into a primary keyword. This is the overall keyword we wanna win, the overall theme of the entire piece of content. I'm also gonna talk about secondary keywords. These are very similar keywords that have maybe the same intent, but different vocabulary or variations of the keyword. These secondary keywords are very closely related to the primary. And then I usually have what I call additional keywords. These are related keywords. They may be something you find in frequently asked questions at the bottom of Google. They're related, but there are slight tangents from the main theme, if that makes sense. The way I've split it up, I usually have one primary keyword. I maybe have two to three secondary keywords. And then maybe anywhere from three to five additional keywords, depending on how long the content piece is. Most of my content is gonna be around 500 to 1,000 words. So we're looking at anywhere from three to five or three to eight keywords that I'm gonna use in a piece of content. So I'm gonna show you both the front and back end of this piece to help identify where this keyword should go to get those top rankings like we just showed you we got on this page. So. First things first, the URL slug. Having a keyword phrase in the URL does matter. And you do wanna always prioritize your consumer and the navigability for the user over a keyword play. But with a blog post, it's usually a little bit easier. Nobody really cares what the URL slug is on a blog post. And if you're doing this correctly and picking a good keyword phrase that you can win, it's typically gonna be a longer tail keyword phrase, which makes for a great title or theme, which is ultimately what your blog is gonna be about. So it's a no brainer in this one. This is the name of the blog. We're gonna use it in the slug and get that additional keyword instance in the URL. Next spot is your page title, also known as an H1. Now H1 is a heading uh, structure. It's an HTML formatting structure that Google uses. This heading is extremely important. It's weighted a little bit higher than other HTML formatting. The H1 comes first. So that's another place where you want to make sure that you have your primary keyword phrase or a close variation. And let me be clear, if it comes down to it and the keyword that you pick that's winnable reads really awkwardly, adjust the keyword so that it reads naturally. Google is smart enough to take that variation and adding to it the context of whatever else you write in that post and put two and two together. So I would not be so worried about using the exact instance of the keyword in that exact place that you have an article that reads like a robot wrote it. When it comes to keyword insertion, there is an art to it. I'm using variations. For instance, this is a very long keyword phrase, how to use Google Keyword Planner without creating an ad. The one nice thing about it being so long is it basically is the entire title. I don't have to add anything before or after. If you have a shorter keyword phrase, you're having to add more to create a title out of it. But there's lots of words within this phrase that give Google context of what it's about. We've got keyword planner. We've got this phrase without creating an ad, how to use, right? Those are all segments of this keyword phrase that we can build on and use those phrases lower down in the content 
to help give Google context that this is going to be about the Google Keyword Planner. It's going to be a how-to type of article. So the intent is informational. It's not commercial. It's not transactional. And then there's also this descriptive um, section of without creating an ad that allows us to say this is a very specific thing. Using variations of any of these sections within headings, within your content is gonna build context for Google. Where this page title, this H1 lives, if you go to your back end and edit your post, depending on your theme, your web builder that you use, we use WordPress, typically a Divi theme. They make it super easy, it's your page title. So you just insert you know, a variation of your primary keyword phrase, Right here is your page title. And one pro tip, do not include more than one H1 in your content. I see this a lot. If you use an H1 tag in content, it'll usually make it larger or bolded. And so sometimes people will do that just to make it look a certain way. But the problem with that is if you use more than one H1 on a page, that sends confusing signals to Google about what the page name is or, or what this page is all about. That can create issues. That's a big technical SEO no-no. There's other ways ways, CSS, coding, themes that you can use to adjust the way that your content looks on your site without using heading formatting. Usually when you create your title, it'll just create the permalink with the title as the URL slug, but you can, after the fact, edit it to put in your keyword. So you could call it something and then use your keyword phrase within the URL slug. That's one way to do that or to add a, a separate variation. So you can adjust the slug uh, before you post it. While we're in the back end, I'm gonna show you a couple of other easy places to start inserting your keywords. And right now I've been talking about where you use the primary keyword and our primary keyword was how to use Google Keyword Planner without creating an ad. I'm gonna talk a little bit more later on about where we're gonna include those secondary keywords, additional keywords, where's good places to include those. But for now we are talking about the primary keyword or a close variation of it. So again, depending on your web builder, what you use, there's different ways to get to the meta text, the meta description, the title tag. And just to be clear, the title tag of your page is gonna be what shows up in the search engine results pages when your content is served up to a, a user that's put in that query. So for instance, if someone types this in, if you wanna Google it right now, we've come up number three, this is what it'll say on our search result is how to use Google Keyword Planner without creating an ad. But if you scroll down a little bit right here, there's a spot for an SEO title. Depending on the page, you might use a different methodology to do this. With a blog, I'm more interested in just serving up that information. And typically my keyword is gonna be a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna include that keyword phrase here. If it's a main web page or a service page that has commercial intent, I would probably have the keyword phrase and then a dash and then put my company name, get a little bit of branding associated with that keyword phrase, where this is just an informational intent keyword on the blog. I'm not too worried about inserting our name within the title tag, but that's how you might approach that if you were to do it on one of your main pages. The second place that you can insert keywords on here is in your meta description. So the same where if you know someone searches this keyword phrase, you come up, you see this title, the next thing that they see right here, this is called the meta description. Now there is a character limit and also with Google and its use of AI, sometimes they will input their own meta description, but it's still a unique spot that you can put a keyword or two in to again, give Google context and paint the picture of what this page is all about. And I look at this as SEO real estate, right? There's your actual page content. Within that content, you have headings, you have some different HTML structures where you can include SEO keywords. We're gonna get into a couple others like image alt text, but the meta description, SEO title, tag, and the URL slug are all just unique places of SEO real estate where you can include your keywords. So. For my meta description, you can see I try to include at least my primary keyword, and if I can, one of my secondary keywords. So if we go back to this keyword research page that I've created, one of my secondary keywords is Google Keyword Planner without campaign. I also have how do I use Google Keyword Planner. These are very close variations like I talked about of this one. So I believe that we tried to use employ this tool for SEO without starting a paid campaign. So we have a variation of campaign in there, see that? So again, I haven't used the exact phrase, but I've used a variation so that the word campaign and Google Keyword Planner, we're starting to build that context from the get-go within the meta description. Next, we are gonna go into the meat of the content. Now, this is a very long keyword phrase. We get this question all the time. Well, what 
if I have a super long keyword phrase, like how can I possibly include it evenly throughout the whole article without it sounding awkward? The answer is you can't. So please do not do that. Instead, use variations. We've got a few different things. How to use Google Keyword Planner, Google Keyword Planner without creating an ad. And then we've also got our secondary and additional keywords that we can use to help build context. But if I do just the main keyword, you can see I've got it in my H1. The very next place I have it is I have it in my introduction. And I, hold on, let's check real quick. It should be in the conclusion, it is. It is a good rule of thumb to use your primary keyword phrase or a close variation of it within the introduction and the conclusion. There's some SEOs out there that will tell you it needs to be in the first sentence. I think if you can get it there, great. But again, I would still lean towards natural use. I wouldn't force it just to get it in there. The next most important spot to put in keywords is your additional headings. You wanna use your headings carefully again, so not only do they break up text, but it also, depending on the heading, uh, the HTML formatting of that heading in H2 versus in H3, you're also telling Google how much to weight that heading in your content. So H2s typically are your secondary themes that help drive the main theme forward. In this blog, let's just look at it really quick. It's how to use Google Keyword Planner without creating an ad. So we've actually created a, a very close variation of that main first keyword and put it in our first heading. And I believe we probably did that in the last heading as well, using Google Keyword Planner without creating ads. So again, a close variation. But your H2s and your H3s are fantastic spots to put in these secondary keywords and these additional keywords that you've picked out. And typically I would, I would put my secondary keywords in those H2s if at all possible. And then if I have H3s, like if those H2 sections become bigger and they have a few different things that I can talk about in those sections, that's usually a good spot to put these additional keywords. And I would say typically additional keywords tend to be frequently asked questions. So they're good to have in smaller segments, smaller sections. You don't wanna make your whole blog about Google Keyword Planner SEO, make this section too big or you you start to confuse Google. Depending on how much content you devote to certain phrases or themes, we'll also decide what sorts of keywords that you end up ranking for. If we go back to our blog, past this first heading, let's just look at some of our other headings. Here's one, should you use Keyword Planner for SEO research? I believe we have, here's our Google Keyword Planner SEO. This is our term that we're targeting there, right? We're getting SEO in there. It's a small section. You can see that it only devotes a little bit to that. You can see that this main section that gives the bullet points and the actionable advice does answer our main question. So we are providing value to help answer a user query and that's extremely important. Just adding keywords into content in all the right places literally doesn't matter at all if your content doesn't accurately match and answer the user query that was typed in. And Google's really cracked down on this. A couple of years ago, you used to be able to hack SEO by just creating two or 3,000 word articles and just covering every single part of that keyword phrase. And the longer your content was, the better chance you had to rank. But it's changed in the last year or two where intent matters more. So now uh, the old 500 word article that used to be extinct has come back because sometimes if you have a very specific question, the person's not looking for a 3,000 word article on everything they need to know about Google Keyword Planner, right? They have a specific question about how do you use Google Keyword Planner without creating an ad and we're answering that question. Now, when it comes to the content body, the last thing we might look at is just the number of times keyword phrases are included throughout the paragraph section text throughout the article. Now, back in the old days of SEO, there used to be some pretty strict rules on what they called keyword density, where they'd say take X keyword, include it 10 times in the blog. And there are some tools out there that maybe still do it that way that say, hey, you need this keyword in there exactly 12 times. And while I think those can be markers to help you get within the right realm, there is no exact number to make content rank. It kind of needs to pass the eye test, number one, and then number two, I would just go for a balanced natural approach. This one, we already went through that exact keyword phrase. It's only in there a couple of times exactly. But if we were to look at you know, Google Keyword Planner, we might see that it's in there a few more times. That's a short tail keyword phrase, the main primary phrase within everything else that we have here. You can kind of see it's used throughout fairly naturally. Maybe we have it a few too many times right here. Typically having it twice in the same sentence or in back-to-back -back sentences 
it's a little bit iffy again. It's not a hard and fast rule, but you could see right here, we might want to split up some of these just so it looks a little bit more natural. You don't want to send signals to Google that you're keyword stuffing that looks spammy. But you can see for the most part, we have it generally in every section and for the most part kind of evened out. And you can do that with any of these phrases like campaign was another one that we have in here. So we've got campaign, campaign, campaign. Again, it's used pretty naturally throughout. Now, the very last thing we want to look at when it comes to SEO real estate and where to include keywords in your content is actually to the naked eye is a hidden section. And what I'm talking about is the alt text within images. Now, if you're on the front end of a site and you're trying to go in here and dissect what's happening, I'll give you just a quick tip that you can use. If you highlight a section, right click, and click inspect, you can actually see the code that's being used, the CSS. This little section is within these H3 brackets. H3 is the HTML for heading three. We know they're using a heading structure here. Well, you can do the same thing for images. If you right click on an image and click inspect, if you scroll down, you'll see this little section called alt. This means that they've been using the alt text, and I'll show you what that is on the back end in just one second. But here you can see it's someone using keyword planner tool. So we've got a variation of our keyword within this alt text on the image. Now, this alt text in an image is typically used for accessibility. You know, if someone is blind, they can't see the image. This alt text can be read to them so they know what the image is about. If the picture is about a dog and your, your keyword's cat and you put cat in there, that's not helpful. But typically, if you're using images that follow along with your main theme of your blog, you're going to pick images where it's going to be easy to insert that keyword phrase while also staying true to describing what the picture's about. So that's how this one is. Someone using a keyword planner tool, right? Here's someone using a tool where they're clicking the word keywords. It's relevant. It works. If we go down and click down here, again, let's look at this one. You can see the alt text, a free Google keyword planner tool. So now we might be able to add a screenshot of, that might be something else we could add here. But if you have a very long blog, you may have more images, or if it's a web page, you might have a lot of images because you're leaning more into the design. So it's a great place to add keywords if you don't have a lot of written content on that page. So if you go on your back end, depending on the web builder you're using and the theme that you're using, this might look a little bit different. But for this, Divi and WordPress, if we go down to the text, you can actually click on the image and there's a little edit button and there's a spot right here just for alternative text. Now, some people use the caption or the title attribute. For our purposes, I've found that using the alternative text is enough to get a little bit of context, get a variation of that keyword inserted. Just gives you another place within the CSS, within the HTML that you're adding a keyword phrase. So to sum up, let's just go quickly over each of those places where keywords can be inserted into your website on a piece of content. The first, your URL slug. Second, your H1, your page title. Third, a meta description. Fourth, your title tag. Uh, fifth, your introduction and your conclusion. The next one would be your additional headings, H2s, H3s, even H4s that you use in your content. And then also your alt text within images. Just another easy spot to include a keyword in your SEO real estate. And there you have it, a complete guide on how to use keywords in your content for SEO. Start with research, winnable keywords, focus on strategic placement, and always put your audience first. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to cover next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.